welcome everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in this afternoon for what is an amazing, amazing conversation we have coming up, celebrating and honoring the inspiration, the musical inspiration behind Mr. Soul. This amazing initiative was led by the producer, Madame herself, Melissa Hazlip, who is on with us now. Melissa, welcome. Thank you. Great. And then we have two phenomenal, I mean, Grammy Award winning beast giants on the call with us. Please welcome Ms. Layla Hathaway and Robert Glasper. Mm -mm. Hi. Hey, mm -mm. hey, 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 happy mm -mm. 2020, happy new Thank year, you. happy Indeed. all of that. It's <laughs> such an honor to have you guys on. Last but not least, please let's welcome Mr. Muhammad Ayers, who was a part of this phenomenal trio, um, putting together this um, unique and original song for the documentary, Mr. Soul, honoring the legacy of Ellis Hazlip. Um, and so for much. those who don't know me, I'm Waka Wusa, and I'm the chief curator and vice president over at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. So um, wanna kick it off first to anyone who wants to take this question um, of this amazing panelist. Um, but I guess starting off with you, Melissa, let, real quick. Um, can you talk a little bit just about the inspiration and what prompted you to create in uh, this documentary about your uncle, Mr. Hazlip, Ellis Hazlip? Thank you, Maka. It's so yes. exciting to be here and to be with all these phenomenal Black creatives today. Um, this was important because we wanted to tell the story of soul and the story of the music and the story of Ellis Hazlip, who was the host of Soul on PBS from 68 to 73. And the show launched the careers of many of the African-American icons of the 20th century, but it also was a vehicle for African-American artistry and the fight for social justice. And it was just unusual at its time. And it really laid the groundwork for so much music on television after that. So we just wanted to you know, pay homage to Ellis and to you know, lift up our kings and queens from this era Mm -hmm. and really see how far we've come and how far we have yet to go with our music, with our culture, mm -hmm. and really pushing the culture forward because that's what Ellis Hazip was all about. Absolutely. I mean, to all of the panelists, um, you know, what was your first experience? What was your first um, emotion when you learned about Ellis Hazlip? Um, I guess, you know, whoever wants to take it first. Uh, well, for me, I, I remember when Melissa had me come in to um, screen the documentary and I think what was were we were we like 10 minutes in <laughs> Melissa like 10 minutes into it I got up and ran out of the room and she was like what's happening you know <laughs> and I immediately started singing a melody into my phone because that's what I do I write I write and I save my you know my ideas on my voice memo that's I've been doing that for years so when something hits me, it hits me in that moment. If I don't record it, I forget it because I just keep going. I throw it out and I keep going. I keep moving. So I, 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 it inspired me so much from the door that I ran out and started singing melodies in my phone because I knew, you know, like okay, at some point I'm gonna have to, you know, I'm gonna have to write a song and 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 come up with something. But it it immediately hit me. I didn't have to watch the whole documentary to be inspired, you know. And I wasn't aware. I wasn't aware of this show at all. You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. weren't aware. And, and the fact that on this show, they gave they gave such a big platform for you to do what you did. You know what I mean? And for, mm -hmm. for no matter how out of the box the art was, you know, he had you on there. You could do a whole 45 minute set. You right. know what I mean? And right. it was like, nobody <laughs> does that ever. Nobody, <laughs> there's still not a show like that. Nobody does right. an hour right. set. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right. And it was right. just like, what the hell? You know what I mean? So just that in itself was was amazing and all the people that he had on there that was like it was their first time really performing on television you know what i mean like mm -hmm. that that was amazing too so I, I mean i just learned so much watching this show i learned so much about about and the the, the platform like you said that he gave people you know uh, to to talk about social justice you know what i mean yeah. when you had muhammad ali on there you had angela davis and you know so many mm -hmm. so many people you know on there you know, talking about social justice and everything. So it was just that plus an hour of music, it was just like a whole right. lot of blackness coming at you. Like, you know, right. boom. And, and 
it was amazing to see. You know what I mean? It's something we need now. You know what I mean? Yes. That's we get yes. we got we got snippets of it here and there. Like people will have show, and you get a little snippets of mm -hmm. social justice talk and little snippets of dope mm -hmm. art. You know, but but mm -hmm. never like this is what it is. This is what it's going to be. Right. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Layla, what about you? What was your what was your feeling? You know, it's interesting that Melissa said um, it was unusual for the time, but it's even unusual for this time because I think, as Rob is saying, we have like these moments, these touchstones of culture and elevating the culture and hearing the news and understanding what's happening in this part of the world and understanding sort of what's happening in dance and sort of what's happening in art. But this show really took you into a deep dive where you got to understand who these people were that were creating, that were a part of this renaissance, mm -hmm. that were part of the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I'm waiting just to see, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm really super hopeful um, that maybe it'll come on Netflix, it'll be on Amazon Prime so our kids yeah. can see that. It's really important for them to know who Sonia Sanchez is, to know, mm. you know what I mean? To know who mm -hmm. all these, who all these historic black kings and queens were and to take a moment and really drill down because what happens with art, even though it mirrors the culture and the society and then it creates this cycle, we don't see it. We don't mm -hmm. really get to really see mm -hmm. it. And for black Americans, that's our history. So our stories yeah. are told through our songs and the dances and the moaning and the art. Yeah. All of that needs um, needs to focus on it. So I was um, I had heard about that show, had never seen it. And so to see the documentary and see all the pieces of what I might be able to see blew my actual mind. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm excited for people to to get excited about this and, mm -hmm. and, and demand to see it and get educated mm -hmm. about it. Absolutely. Mohammed, what about you? What was your uh, initial reaction? Well, my initial reaction in learning about Elvis is I thought that he was a prophet because he superseded a lot of what came afterwards. He was like the groundwork for so much of came, what came after him. But when I, I watched the documentary for the first time, when I had the, um, the honor of getting a chance to screen it, I was thinking to myself that I can't wait until something like this comes back again. Because if you notice lately, the past few years, especially in the arts creative community, there's been a lot of talk as to us not having a space to where we can fully embody our dopeness and then not feel like we're under the watchful eyes mm -hmm. or we have to apologize mm -hmm. for our individuality. Mm -hmm. And especially now in the social space, that's something that has permeated and has even gotten to an all-time pitch to where people are like where can we go to where we can express ourselves that way well this show like rob said everybody who was anybody in the black arts movement touched that stage so that showed that ellis hazel was a networking genius how at that time he basically anybody who was anybody wanted to go to a public access television show channel 13 and go and perform and do 45 minute sets and like oh, later sure. The whole right. <laughs> you know, and, and also, the, the beautiful thing is, is that in the documentary, you saw that Ashford and Simpson, they got their start. He pushed them out there to want to be their own group. There are not many people in high places that will give you an opportunity to say, yo, I think you're dope. You should be on this. Me even having this conversation right now is proof that like Rob, there are not many artists who get into that position who will say that, yeah, I think that you should do such and such and give you an opportunity to write and create. Ellis Hazlip was one of those people. He didn't haunt, he didn't hoard over his position. He opened it up mm -hmm. so that then we could have a place, a hub, a home to come and perform and show our dopeness. I mean, what's not to love about that? Hey. Nice. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Which I mean, then all of this inspiration, like we're with the whole music hub right here. So let's get into the creative process. You both, you all have touched on it um, as far as like what you were feeling. And Rob, you're saying, like, now I'm calling you Rob. I hope that's okay. Oh, you good. Oh, we good. We're family. We good. <laughs> Sis, we all good. <laughs> okay. I, like, I, I'm, I'm drinking my uncle. I'm drinking my uncle nearest here. I'm like, I, I got a little too loose. Melissa, do you people, do people ever call you? Do people ever call you no? 
No, they don't. They don't. And I always see that. It's N-O, but no, N-O. people don't. No, people don't. People don't. But, but hey, I'm, I'm, I'm embracing that I like now. that. I like uh, that. Right? No, that's what's up. So, so getting into the creative process, you mentioned like you have your phone, you're doing the melodies on your, on your, uh, in your memos, mm-hmm. like talk a little bit about how, cause it starts with you. Like mm-hmm. you're, you're running the narrative here. Mm-hmm. And like, I love that. Like that's, I feel that same vibe curated. Like you're running this. Yep. How did all the pieces come together? How did Layla come into the picture? How did Muhammad come into the picture? Can mm-hmm. you tell us about that? Yeah, I mean, I grew up, my, my mother was a singer and she sung, you know, all the styles, jazz, mm-hmm. gospel, R&B, soul, you know, country. She sung everything, <laughs> you know what I mean? So in my household growing up, I heard everything all the time. In, in my mm-hmm. house, the, the, you know, it was so eclectic. You didn't know what you're going to hear from one day to another, ever. You didn't yeah. know what, it could be Mahalia Jackson, Aretha Franklin, Bette Midler, Yes. Luther. <laughs> you know, it. you're like, what the hell? <laughs> Why does Robert know so many Liza Minnelli songs? Right. Listen, don't worry about that. Just <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, yes. But my mom, my mom just was a, she loved, she was a musical mutt. And there, therefore, I'm a musical mutt, you know? So mm-hmm. when, when I started watching the film, it just reminded me of the house, just hearing all the music. It just reminded me mm-hmm. of the house and, you know, being a part of that, you know? Um, so, you know, immediately, when, like I said, I, I heard a melody in my head and I was, I don't even know if it's the same melody back then that I came up with. Cause I remember we're in the studio. I told you, Melissa, I said, I said, I said, very cocky, watch this. I got the melody. It's going to be an amazing song. And <laughs> <laughs> it came <laughs> and I heard the melody and I already knew I was like, oh, sh- Layla, first of all, I'm uh, Layla is is obvious to me because mm-hmm. she's Layla, but also mm-hmm. her dad is Donnie, who's also, mm-hmm. you know, a blueprint for soul music and is in the film as mm-hmm. well. And I don't know of another parent kid combo that's as dope at that level. Sorry, I don't. Yeah, okay. Not at that level. Period. Period. Not, not, no, literally. Period. But I'm to that for sure. Yeah, definitely not, definitely, definitely definitely not vocally, for sure. You know, for sure, not vocally, not at all. I'm not even close. So in my mind, I'm like, there, there's the lineage right there. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad, glad it's nice, my cousin. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, for real, for real. Glad it's nice, my cousin. We in there. And then we got, we got. We got Layla with her dad. I'm like, okay, first of all, I hear Layla on everything. I have to stop using her at some point. I'm like, okay, let me stop because you do too many things. I have to like, you know, make sure I put it in the right place. You know, I can overdo it. Uh, I, I call myself the music of Spike Lee. You know how he has those same characters in every yes. film? I'm like that. There's like three people I'm going to use all the time. Doesn't matter what it's time. for. <laughs> Layla, but like, no problem with that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> So, so it was that, and then you know I've been working with Muhammad for a while, and aren't you, aren't you, aren't you, uh, you and Roy Ayers related to? Yeah, he's um, actually my second cousin from my father. Get out of here! So, you know what I mean? so, That's royalty right there, yeah, right there, for sure. Right for there. sure. So Jesus. it's it's all it's all connected in that way too, just by roots huh. and just by. By roots and just by sheer dopeness. Sorry, mm-hmm. that's just what it is. I mean, I it is what those, it is. I mean, this is what it is, and and I needed people who could do it fast. And Muhammad's fast, mm-hmm. Layla's fast, yeah. and the, and I needed somebody who who gets it. I didn't have to explain nothing. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It was just mm-hmm. like boom. Mm-hmm. This is what it is. Muhammad was like, oh, okay. He wrote it. He literally wrote that overnight. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> literally yeah, wrote it overnight. Oh my god! And Layla came yeah. in and sung it down in like an hour. And then we had a plane. <laughs> Matter of fact, you had a plane to catch, Layla. I remember that. Yeah, I had to I had to go quickly. I mean, it was yeah. it's such a joy, you know, always working with Rob, as you know. I don't want to mm-hmm. I don't want to tell him how great he is because you know he doesn't know. You know how <laughs> <laughs> but it is also <laughs> it's also um so great working with uh, Muhammad because he's such a um like a real lyricist and a poet Mm -hmm. so um very few people are able to take um i think a theme like the name of the movie is this this was the name of the show Mm -hmm. make something with that that 
makes sense. And to be able to mm-hmm. translate that, you know, they're they're both really alchemists to be able to take it and make it into this thing that I can then just come mm-hmm. in and say, oh, here's the story I'm telling. So mm-hmm. I feel um, really lucky that they called me. Yes. Well, the vibe definitely translates. I know we're like running short on time, but I mean, the vibe definitely translates. Listening to it, like Layla, you sound amazing. I'm I'm already a huge fan, so I don't need to be in the rah rah crowd. I am in the rah rah crowd. I am the rah rah crowd for the panel. I'll sit. This is my soul jacket. I will sit in the rah rah crowd. Like your voice on this is sick. Like you sound amazing. Well, you know the demo. The demo was not terrible, so I really just followed the Mm. demo. You know what Mm. I mean? So uh, Muhammad had kind of laid it out and. I feel like he knows where he knows where um, my voice is, and so I don't know if that was taken into account. Everybody knows like, where your voice is, Layla. Well, <laughs> you know, in, terms of, in terms of writing something that I could really finesse and try right. to finesse, um, right. yeah. And I really, I, I'm so honored by the fact that my father's voice opens the film, and then my voice mm. sort of closes yes. the film. You know, Isn't that? Right. Oh, just, gosh, really beautiful. Really beautiful. That was so important. So important yeah. because we start yeah. the film with the, an actual clip, um, um, an audio clip, because we didn't show it, but we show Martin Luther King getting on the bus and you hear mm-hmm. this rumbling underneath and this beautiful song that you're familiar with. And it's Donny Hathaway's The Ghetto, mm-hmm. but it's not just any version of it. It's like this, the version that he played live on Soul. So that's mm-hmm. like the first thing you hear in the film. And so we knew that we were telling the journey of black music and the journey of soul. We had to start with Donny mm. Hathaway and then we go to the end and we have the first daughter of soul, Layla Hathaway. Oh. That was like, you know, so oh, deep. Wow. I mean, it just gives Level me chills, yeah. you know? So deep. Muhammad, I want to ask you, like when you were putting the lyrics together, the poetry together, um, I love that you said that, Layla, because that truly, it, I mean, that's a whole other level when you're able to write and it translates just when you're reading the words to whether you're singing them and how they're performed. So what was that process for you? Even just the composition of words are just so deep. I mean, and then even just how it's all put together. It's so beautiful with Ellis kind of closing it out and just speaking. So Muhammad, can you shed some light on your writing process? Um. Well, it's easy to write whenever you have, uh, Rob is the kind of creator that he he lays, he creates a universe whenever he does whatever he does. And he's very specific, but he's very open. So it gives you the ability to hear what you hear. And if it's good, he tells you, if it's not, he'll tell you. But um, <laughs> when it, and that's, that's the good thing. It's important, but it really yeah. <laughs> when I was thinking about it though with the show, I was thinking to myself, and he told me, he said, Layla Hathaway is going to sing this. So I'm thinking to myself, soul, okay, if you had the opportunity to be on that show, think about if Layla Hathaway just came off stage and you're about to go on and you're going to perform. Now, Layla Hathaway to me, her father is the voice of God when it comes to vocally singing. There is no, there is no voice more supreme. And if her voice, his voice is the voice of God, she got to be the voice of Jesus. So, <laughs> so if you're given, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, since we stick it to the whole in there. But um, if you're given the task of writing subtitles for the daughter of God, you need to make sure that you say something that makes sense. So I thought if she just came off stage and I'm going to go perform on Soul, What would I want her to say if she saw me nervous? And that's where the song starts. Do you know who you are, where you Mm. come from, what you possess? Like you're so much more than a star. There's power in your greatness. Like, don't you know you're a God and a God is king and queen most high. You are like, you're the one you've been chosen. The whole world is hoping, like, you know, now is your time. Now get out there and go perform. How would you show your soul? Mm. You know, because that's how I, that's how I look up to her in respect of her artistry. And to have that opportunity, it's like, if I had the voice of God talking to me, that's what I would want the voice of God to tell me. Mm. Wow, that's, mm. oh, that's, so and that's also so much mm. about soul too. And, and, and what Ellis was doing too. And was, he was saying to all these artists, do you know who you are? You are greatness. Mm. This is about black absolutely. excellence, yes, black absolutely. joy, black love, you know, yes. black, black pride. And it's in the music. And he, Ellis Hazel said, you know, R&B 
is the floor for Black Pride. Mm -hmm. And so like, it's all in this music and, 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 and Rob was so clever. He like put little themes throughout the film. So you hear little bits and pieces of the song from the very beginning, and then mm -hmm. it culminates at the end. And so you get this theme of like searching for our soul and you know, you are kings and queens and that's really what we're all about, you know? Mm, it's so, it's captured so beautifully. I mean, the music is always part of every revolution. I mean, even as this show created a disruption during that time, I mean, the music definitely translates. I would just wanna ask one last question for everyone. Um, and just the power of music being infused in this film, you can't do it without it, it's, it's soul. But right. I feel like, you know, just the impact of what that meant in the past and how this song speaks to today's time. Um, just looking at how this music can then just inspire the next generation of creators through its message. I mean, this song, um, these words, they carry message, they carry inspiration. So can you talk about the importance of that right now? and how much we need this song, this film. Rob? Anyone, I <laughs> guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, Rob or Muhammad or um, just how, it's, how maybe even how this, this song has encouraged you, empowered you during this time. Everybody's gone through their own struggle with this, so. Right, I can say that for myself, it, I mean, the, the, um, the lyric itself is so self-explanatory and so simply and eloquently and beautifully said. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people that write lyrics. There are a lot of people that write poems. This actual guy that we have here is an actual uh, song writer. Mm -hmm. So he took a thing and said, here's a message I'm trying to imbibe and this is what it is. It's so important right now because we, um, Black America, we often lose sight of the royalty that we come from. And so to have it so succinctly put without innuendo, without machismo, without mm. all of the stuff that makes radio what it is right mm -hmm. now, that makes being like a lyric writer what that is right now. Um, it's just a beautifully eloquent, simply said song. And those are like my favorite songs. And I honestly think as far as the melody as well, the melody and the lyric, it, those are stories that need to be told to black kids, particularly mm. now mm -hmm. because they're being fed a lot of information that is counter uh, yeah. reality and simplicity. Not and so, cat. yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Not just, a it's a, they did a good job. They did a really great job. And I was, I was really honored to just be in the room. Yeah, no, no, no. I feel the same way. No. And like real real quick, I would just say, you know, when we made this film and we re-released, we released it over the summer at the height of, uh, you know, social unrest, it reminded me so much of what had happened 50 years ago after Martin Luther King, King mm -hmm. had been assassinated. And this time it's George Floyd being assassinated and we are responding and pushing back and trying to change the world. And this song is so special because it's, it reminds us of our greatness. And, and I feel yeah. like the film and what Ellis Hazelp was always doing was reminding black people of our greatness. Even if you've been distracted or you've been discriminated against or you've been held back, the truth is in you. And, mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of not just soul coming from the soul and music coming from the soul, but the truth of who we are. And this mm -hmm. song completely embodies that and it matches the film perfectly. Yeah, so I, I agree you, with that. <laughs> yeah. And I think we need that message now more than ever. I mean, we yes, need we do. Ellis Hazlip. We need music. We need all of these yes. things. You know, music is healing and we can all relate mm -hmm. to that no matter what color we are. Uh, yes. and music is universal and mm. black, black music is universal. Black history is American history, right? Yes, so all yes, of this is. is really important right now because we need, it's like we need soul and the voice of Ellis Hazel and this kind of music to restore the soul of a nation. Oh, you know? there we and go. I, I, and I feel that it will. I really do. Yes, definitely if may, moving. If I may add something to that, do you realize the messengers that you that you sit amidst? Like I was watching Rob's GQ interview 
good interview though. Uh, the breakdown with all of the musical scenes uh, in jazz music and his brother's depth of knowledge when it comes down to the connection to the past. And now he's been able to interweave it into something presently. What it is is remarkable because there's so much nowadays that's created that's counter to that. Layla's connection to the legacy vocally, her being the de facto instrument like that, okay, she connects to that past organically because of not just her lineage, but also because, because of her study. Like it, it takes, do you know how hard it is to be able to learn how to tooth and throat sing, to switch your mm. voice into two, three harmonies? I mean, mm. that's the level of commitment and depth that this woman has to her you know, but, do you, but do you know what's the best thing? You talk about connections to all of that. They appeal to a young audience. You look at their numbers, they're the bulk of both of their audiences are young. And the fact that we have messengers that have the depth of knowledge and education that on their social media platforms in the real life, they share so much of it. That's a testament to you said message music. It's the messengers. Ellis focused a lot on the messengers. He was quick to want to use his platform in order to pump the messengers out there. And I think that now that things are coming back around in this digital age to where it's more analog and organic, I love the fact that you have these creators that you sit in the company of that are doing a lot to change the narrative and the sound and the texture of where we're headed. Because there's a shift that's happened. And mm -hmm. pay attention, they're, the, they're two of the people that are at the forefront of that change, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, you better speak mm -hmm. on it. All right. I love it. I love it. Well, well, I think look, so, my computer oh, died. I ran and got my charger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it died right in the middle of oh. I thought oh, I was like, oh well, Rob has to go. Uh, no. all right, no. so we're gonna but <laughs> Muhammad just ended it perfectly. What he did, that was that was what he we needed. Did. Yeah. I know you sure. said that. I mean, well, from the lyricist, I mean, from the poet. Thank you all so so much. I mean, I can't put no more on that than already uh, has been For said. Sure. So. Truly, yeah. definitely moved. I would say just as a re on the receiving end, just watching it, everything executed. I mean, Melissa, from the top to bottom, I had, you know, so grateful to know who Ellis Hayslip is and to really be able to push that narrative. Thank you all as artists, as creatives for using your platforms to inform this new generation for this next generation of artists coming up and truly being a reflection of the time. I mean, like you said, Layla, perfectly. It, the message is succinct. It's like, know who you are, no better time than to realize and step up in your greatness um, and let that be amplified. This film helps us do that. So Melissa, thank you so much for allowing us to do that and gratitude to Ellis Indeed. Hazlip for giving us so much to even be able to give back for right now, for right thank now. You. All right, yeah. so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you for sure. Yes. Of course, of course. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Good it's to nice see to meet all, all of you guys. Yeah. Truly, Indeed. Truly. You too. Thank you, Melissa.